Welcome back to Tar Hill Illustrated. Dot com and if you're watching on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI staff writer Jacob Turner, and joining me from the Dean Smith Center tonight, following North Carolina's 91 to 73 win over Duke, our very own publisher Andrew Jones. And, and Andrew, I know people probably wonder where I'm at right now. I'm currently up in Virginia Beach on a football recruiting assignment. So if anybody's wondering why the heck I'm sitting in a in a hotel room right now. You know why now we got it, but like I said, we got AJ in the Smith Center. Beautiful, but it's a car- nice hotel room. With THI yeah, man. AJ hooked it up. I'm in a five star hotel over here, so you know <laughs> it's the perks of the job. You know what I mean, AJ? <laughs> Go to but, the door when someone knocks. Exactly, exactly, man. But like I mentioned earlier, Carolina getting the win over Duke tonight. Regular season finale for both teams. Senior night for the Tar Heels, 91 to 73. Tar Heels finished the regular season at 16. And nine, ten, and six in the ACC, and finish at sixth place in the ACC ahead of next week's ACC tournament. Going to run through some stats real quick, AJ. Then we'll dive right into it. Caleb Love, another big game from him: eighteen point seven assists. Armando Baycott, eighteen point six boards. Curran Walton had eighteen points as well, and Garrison Brooks on senior night finished with fourteen. AJ, let's dive right into it, man. Um, Carolina twenty six to six start for the Tar Heels. I know, obviously, the seniors got the start. That Walker Miller charge was something that was mentioned a ton by Roy and some of the other players in the press conferences. They, they kind of set the tone for the Tar Heels. But overall, you know, Carolina started off hot and just played really well for most of the night. And it never really got too close or too interesting. And maybe a couple of times in the second half, maybe. But overall, it was a pretty convincing and dominant performance from the Tar Heels tonight. Well, when it did get interesting, Carolina's propensity for occasional self-destruction kind of kept you hanging yeah, on. Yeah, you were you kind know, of wondering, yeah. Does Duke mm-hmm. have something in them? But Duke was really bad early, but Carolina deserves a lot of credit for that. The Tar Heels were totally dialed in. They mm. were focused. They were energetic. And all the guys, all of them that we talked to, said Walker Miller's charge just took them to another level. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Garrison, if you haven't watched the player interviews, do you saw on our channel. Garrison was asked about Walker Miller fairly late in his interview. And he, he, he gave one of the best – I wrote a piece about Garrison, about, you know, those five and six word answers. Yeah. I asked him about that on Friday because when he was a freshman, he couldn't get him to say much of anything. But <laughs> you'd say something like Garrison would, you know, get eight rebounds, score eight points, which was big for him as a freshman. Even after Tennessee, he and Sterling were phenomenal. The reason they won at Tennessee when they were freshmen. Mm-hmm, I, I asked that him one. about that. And he's like, yeah, we played pretty well. <laughs> we played pretty hard. <laughs> but his like answer Garrison. about Walker Miller and mm-hmm. and what he means to this program and, and, and that play in particular – was a phenomenal answer by Garrison, so everybody should go check that out. Yeah, definitely. Look, they were they were as good as they can be in those first nine, uh, ten and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. It was twenty six to six over uh, Duke's not a bad team. Duke doesn't play well all the time, but they're not a bad team. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that for whatever reason, stuff is happens to this to this Duke team a lot during the course of games. Now, this isn't a Duke podcast, but mm-hmm. to understand what Caroline did, is, you need to also understand who Duke is. Mm-hmm. Duke. I think came in here and they probably were ready to play, but the Tar Heels punched them in the mouth. Yeah. And, and they never recovered. I mean, they were body blows. They were elbows. I mean, if this was a street fight, Carolina brought everything they could fit in their pockets and then some, and they whacked Duke over the head with it. Mm-hmm. And, and they did it in every facet of the game. Even the turnovers didn't really start picking up till after that. And they mm-hmm. were an issue, which we'll address later on in this podcast. But, you know, you think about Garrison's three. Uh, the fadeaway three as a shot clock is, clock is going down. That was in a sequence of five or six possessions in which Duke had a couple of shot clock violations. So mm-hmm. when Garrison hits that fadeaway three, especially after being hurt and leaving the floor, he, he was back in the tumble. He was at that, dealing with the trainer. Yeah, That's when you know, okay, this is a different night. This is a senior night fadeaway three by a guy who spent all offseason – shooting three-pointers and told us back in November and October that he was going to be a perimeter guy this year. He hadn't been. He had two, three, he was two for five coming in. But he hit, then he hit another one from the top of the key. And you're like, okay, well, I think uh, I think that one even hit the glass. Yeah, I think it did. Again, two shots that seemed improbable in many respects, but they went through and I think it sort of mirrored what the Tar Heels were doing. There were some thread-the-needle passes that made it through. Mm-hmm. And then on the defensive end, you know, they left Duke open a little bit and Duke was missing open shots. But, you know, I think a lot of the stuff was contested during that stretch. They set yeah. the tone. They were up 20. And this Duke team, I don't think, has the fortitude to come back from a 20-point deficit in this building against this Carolina team playing the way they were today, as dialed as they were today. Yeah, like I said, I thought Carolina looked looked really 
good tonight. And, and, and I just didn't think Duke for the most part really had any answers for Carolina, especially once they, you know, went behind by 20 so early in the game, it was kind of game over in, in hindsight when that, when that scoreline was that high, but AJ, the next thing I kind of, kind of want to talk about, Carolina did another really good job on Matthew Hurd. I mean, Duke's most dangerous player, one of the top scorers in the league, 14 points tonight, just six for 16 from the floor. I know they also shut him down and, and really didn't allow him to get any good looks in Durham as well. So, you know, over two games and, and particularly again tonight, I thought thought Carolina defensively did another really good good job on Duke's most dangerous player in Matthew Hurt. He, he missed a few wide open shots in the yeah, second he did. half. But that, mm-hmm. but that and, and one late in the first half, but that's after I think Carolina kind of got into him a little bit. Uh-huh. So even though there was nobody within seven feet when he had shot a couple of balls, <laughs> I think the mental effect that Carolina had on him affected those shots. I agree. I'll tell you what, he had his first field goal with a minute 18 left in the first half, mm-hmm. and it cut Carolina's margin of 40 to 21. So he was insignificant, totally insignificant as Carolina built its lead. You go back to Durham, he played 21 minutes. He was in foul trouble. But remember, he only had one shot attempt the first 10 minutes before he yep. picked up a second foul that night. Carolina did the same thing to him. He got some more shots, but they weren't going in. Six for 16 is not what Matthew Hurd typically does. And he was two for 10 from three point range. Uh, he had a layup right after hitting that, um, that for his first bucket. So he had two buckets late in the half. And then he had another bucket at about the four minute mark of the second half. And then he had like, I think it was his last three came in a sequence of around 11 minute mark to the eight, seven minute mark, somewhere around there. And mm-hmm. all of them were basically, I think the, the one shot he had that actually cut the margin the most was down to 54, 50. And that was fairly early in the half. Other than that, they were basically to keep him within 18 or 20. Mm-hmm. So he was insignificant. He's the best player on Duke's team or yeah. the best players in this league. He's, he's going to win the scoring title. And in two games this year, Matthew Hurt is nine for 21 against Carolina. I think mm-hmm. nine for 22 against Carolina with 21 points. If you knew that going into the first Duke game, that Carolina was going to do that in both games and that Caleb Love would go off the way he has, you would pencil in a Carolina victory in both games. Oh, yeah. The Tar Heels have been criticized a lot for their defense this year. But the two games of Duke, against Duke, they have defended the best offensive player in this league extremely well. And tonight, that was a big part of it. Because that 26th or 6th run, huge mm-hmm. part of it was hurt, was just not in the flow. And yeah, it was almost as if at times Duke didn't even know he was out there. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, that, that Carolina did a really good job. And then the two games this season, like I said, against the night, really just stopping him from getting and getting into a rhythm. You know, like I said, there was a couple open shots that he usually makes, but I think Carolina kind of disrupting that rhythm and getting up in his grill and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it definitely was multiple had a lot to guys. Do with that. You know, it was multiple guys doing it. Cal people have been great critical of Garrison Brooks' defense at times this year, but Garrison was on him for a stretch after yep. the ankle injury. He did a nice job. So, mm-hmm. and it was a team thing too. Garrison was asked about it after the game. He said it was a team thing, and I think it was. Yeah. I think that they had six eyes on him a lot, and all ten eyes knew where he was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, AJ. You know, it's looking back to last Saturday. You know, Carolina beat Florida State, top team in the league, just one. You know, just one of the best teams in the league this season. Um, it still had a lot of turnovers in that game, found a way to win, played really well, particularly in the second half and ended up beating Florida State. Now you're kind of flipping it today you know, to this Saturday, you know, played a, another really good game, but had another a lot of turnovers, 20 turnovers to, for the Tar Heels today, but beat two quality opponents. I know Duke's a little bit down this year, but it doesn't matter. It's Duke Carolina rivalry. You got to come ready to play and be ready to play in these games. Carolina was, but like I said, you know, looking back at, you know, last Saturday and then again tonight, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of turnovers beating some good teams, and but you know, Carolina's still finding a way to win. So I think that's really a positive they can take into the postseason. 21 turnovers to twenty for 25 points for FSU, 20 for 23 today. So that's 40, yep. it's 40, 41 turnovers. Got so many. It's, it's hard good to math add. right 40, there. 41, <laughs> yeah, 41 turnovers for, what, 48 points, I guess it was. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. And they won both games. Yep. And they beat a really good team last week. And I think even though Duke is down, the, every, the people who are involved in this team will tell you it's still a higher level game. Oh, yeah. Uh, and when we've talked before. I mean, Coach K has said so many times, one of the reasons these two teams do so well in the postseason and get the Final Fours is because they play two Final Four games during the course mm-hmm. of the season. Mm-hmm. So it's a different level of intensity. It's a, it's a different stage. You know a ton of eyeballs are on. So a lot of times, especially young teams, when they make a lot of mistakes, it tends to kind of affect other aspects of their game. And the thing I've been impressed with the last two weeks is that even though they have done this, and they've done it more than just these two games, but Mm -hmm. these two in particular, the Tar Heels were able to overcome it. And you think about it, if they're down to 12 or 15 in those areas, they win this thing by almost 30 points. Mm -hmm. So it showed in last week, it wouldn't have been as close as it was. So 
it shows you that at, in stretches, when people are so fixated on turnovers, turnovers and turnovers, a lot of other stuff they're doing really well when they're yeah. doing it well. So we've seen this team raise their high end significantly over the last month because two Saturdays ago, they put 99 on Louisville in this building. Mm -hmm. So you go back to the week before that, they actually did a lot of positive things at UVA. They just didn't hit shots the Saturday before that they want to do. So the last five Saturdays, even with UVA, there were positives that came from that. This team has changed its game. They've elevated their game significantly. They still are a mystery. We don't know what team's going to show up in Greensboro on Wednesday. And even mm -hmm. Caleb Love said tonight when he was asked about, you know, does this kind of, is this a springboard to the, the postseason? The first thing he said was, well, we tend to lay an egg a lot. <laughs> yeah. We tend to follow up a game like this with laying an egg. So that's mm -hmm. his words. Mm -hmm. And I think we've all seen that too. But when they've hit their high end, they have a lot further to drop with laying an egg. I mean, laying an egg Monday night Syracuse was losing by two points. I like that Buddy Beheim was hitting everything. So uh, keeping things in perspective, we have seen this team grow a lot. Mm -hmm. We've seen them bump their head on the ceiling a few times here in the last couple of weeks. And they weren't doing that in December or January, but they're doing it now. So that's progress. They're still a 16-9 club. They're still a club yeah. that could go out in the first game in Greensboro. I think that this puts them in the NCAA tournament. They could go out in the first game in, in Indianapolis. But – they can also do a little bit of damage, too. And I'm not so sure a month ago we looked at this team and said, yeah, they can do some damage. Now I think we know that they can. It's just a matter of stringing together. And they're going to have to cut these turnovers down when the possessions go down in games in the postseason, too. So, mm -hmm. But they've shown that they can get over it. They don't let it weigh on them for a long time. And they can still pick up important wins when having that is still a big issue. Absolutely. That's a big plus, in my opinion. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, definitely. AJ, one thing, I, last thing I want to ask you real quick, what was the atmosphere like in the Smith tonight? Obviously about 3,200 fans there. What what was that like tonight? It was, I mean, 3,200 in this building. Um, we've all been, everything, our perspective has been changed so much in the last year. That's a good that, way to put it. You know, I think Dina in our little tweet thing that we had, uh, Dina said after Kerwin hit that that jumper on the that three on the break mm -hmm. in transition, that this place would have just, the roof would have oh, been blown off in, yeah. in a normal situation. It was still loud. I'm sure. I, I wasn't, my seat wasn't shaking or anything like that. It happens mm -hmm. a lot in games here, not just for Duke games, but other games. Mm -hmm. I think the fans did a great job. They had 2,400 students. Uh, there was a nice buzz in the building. Uh, they were riding Duke pretty hard. At one point, the fans <laughs> were chanting NIT, and Roy <laughs> oh, man. vehemently started waving yeah. his hands, telling them to stop like doing Roy. that. You know, Roy was appreciative. They had 3,200 people in here. I mean, mm. it is what it is. I hate saying that, but I just said it anyway. It is. It, uh, is. it really is, though. You got caught <laughs> saying something trite a couple of weeks ago in the video, so I guess I've entitled the yeah, one you're here. not lying. <laughs> but, you know, this is the end of the regular season. Mm -hmm. They've gotten to this part of the finish. There's a few finish lines here. They've mm -hmm. gotten to this one. And we did podcasts seven months ago before football started, eight months ago. We didn't know if we'd have any of this. No. So we have. So I'm personally, personally, I feel blessed to have been mm -hmm. through the football ride and now through the basketball ride. You've been along uh, for a lot of it and through mm -hmm. all of it in a variety of ways. So uh, now we just got, they have either two games or more than two games left and then it'll yeah. be the yeah. end of the road. But uh, the fact that they got here and their fans here, I think a lot of people feel like everything's heading in the right direction uh, with everything right now. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to see a, a full house in the Smith Center next season. But Carolina getting the win in their home finale, senior night, 91-73 to 73 over the Blue Devils. As always, guys, that's going to do it for us. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. If you've enjoyed the video and if you enjoyed the win over Duke tonight, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Like it, share it, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.